good morning. Thank you so much for being here. I am Jody Jackson. I am a manifestation coach here at Life Coach University. And sorry, I'm just looking up a couple of things. Okay. And uh, I just want to welcome you and thank you for coming. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, a part of manifestation and how to live simply. But before I do that, I just want to talk a little bit of, about what Life Coach University is. Um, what we actually are doing here specifically is a pay it forward platform. So I really, really, really want to thank you for coming to this because paying it forward is such a simple, no pun intended, way of, um, you know, getting what you want and giving back to the world. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for being here. And let's get started. So again, my name is Jody Jackson. And as I said, I am a manifestation coach. I help people get what they want. Really that simple. I love simplicity. I love breaking things down into simplicity. It's just so much easier to do, to think about, to get what you want. So I looked up a definition of simplicity. I mean, you hear the word, you kind of automatically know what simplicity is, right? We learn it throughout our lives. And there were lots of definitions and they were all similar as you can imagine, but one really called to me. And that was um, something that is easy to do, easy to understand and easy to carry out. All three are with ease, right? So that is so opposite of the kind of world we live in today. And that's probably why I push for it so much because we live in such a complex world. And I came about living that way because that was just an easier way to get through all this complexity for me. And there's plenty of others out there that like to do that. And I found them and I have that around me now. I have that simplistic energy around me now, which makes it even easier to be able to do something like this if you surround yourself with what you want. So I'm going to talk about different ways um, of being simplistic in our lives. And I'm going to go through different ones because some call to some people better than others. Uh, so hopefully something will call to you. If you don't have a pen and paper handy yet, um, I urge you to get some or some way to write notes down in case you hear it because uh, like I said earlier, you know, I break it down. And when you hear something broken down, more times than not, it's something you've never heard before. And if you're anything like me, I don't remember it. I have to write it down. So I uh, just wanted to put that out there for a minute. So the first thing I wanna talk about is our mindsets, right? Because living in such a complex world, we automatically have a certain kind of mindset. We're all different. Um, and the reason something is a mindset is because we've either come up with something that's really important to us and made that our mindset, maybe our values. Uh, maybe we've learned it through family or situations, society. 
And that's been going on so long and we've just been following that. That's another mindset. And the longer you have this mindset, the more that defines who you are. So the good news is mindsets can change. So if you love your mindset, wonderful. That's great news. I'm happy for you. If you don't like something about your mindset, and I'm willing to bet most people don't because we all judge ourselves. Um, the good news is that can change. And here's a kind of a way to figure that out right? What, what has changed? So think of a time in your life when you thought a certain way, maybe when you were younger, right? Because as we get older, we change, right? We learn things, we get knowledge, we get clarity, and we have a new mindset. So think of a time in your life when uh, you had a certain mindset, maybe sometime in school or in high school or in your early years of starting out in a career or anything, right? And then think of years going by to a time when you're a different person. You've had more experiences. Uh, you've had more time to just change what you think, you know, maybe you were thinking what other people thought and you wanted to become more independent and now you're thinking like you want to think, right? So look at the difference between how you used to think and how you think now. What you did was you changed your mindset and you changed it with intention whether you realized it or not, but you did do it with intention. And that's one part that's very important to living sim simply, simplistic, simplicity, however you wanna put it. Um, so mindset is very important when you're thinking about simplicity. Do you have a simple mindset? Do you have a complex mindset? Is your mind itself always whirling around? Because you have so many different things to do, you don't know what to do. And if you don't know what to do, you're possibly not picking the best thing to be done next. Or you're just kind of, you know, grabbing from here and here and here and here, you know, what to do, when. And none of it makes sense. When you lead a simplistic lifestyle, everything does make sense because you learn how to do it, right? So think of, think of a problem that you want to solve, okay? As far as simplicity is concerned. What's a part of your life that you would like to see, uh, that, that you would like to simplify? And you don't know how to do it. Think of, just brainstorm. Think of some things that you could do that would simplify that area of your life. Right? Are you doing it all on your own? Can you get help? You know, think about how it's working for you. And now that you thought of the problem that you want to solve, whether you, you thought of why or how or, or, or anything, the next question I want to ask you is now that you know the problem you want to solve, that area of your life, what is the 
smallest action step that you can take to start on that journey of simplifying that part of your life. The smallest step. And the reason I say that is because that is going to be so much more doable, easier than taking a bigger step. We all want to take big steps because we want to get there faster. That's just the kind of world we live in now. We want to get every, every place we want to go faster. But don't let that fool you. Going faster is the complexity that you don't want anymore. So you need to learn to slow down. Slowing down is where the simplicity comes from. So what's the problem you want to solve? In what area of your life to make more simplistic? And what is the smallest action step you can take? Now, notice I say action step, not a thought in your head, but an action step. Because so many times we, I definitely include myself in this, think of something we want to do, but what is our action tell us, right? What's, what's, what is what's really going on with us when we're going to deep dive within what's really happening with us, what we're thinking we want to do, or the action that we're actually taking, right? Now, deep diving within ourselves is not an easy thing to do. It's humbling. It's hard. But as I say so many other times, if you can just get yourself to the other side of that storm, you're going to be in a better place. No question. You will be. Now, how long the storm lasts is up to you. How you take that action is up to you. So your actions will predict how slow or fast this is going to happen for you. So I bring up the thoughts versus actions so you could really keep yourself accountable as I start to talk about these different ways to live your life simply and you pick one or two that you want to do. You can keep yourself accountable by thinking, this is what I want to do, but this is what I actually did. And this is not for you to beat yourself up for in any way, not at all. It's just to show yourself, because think about it. How many times do we go about our daily lives and not think about what we're doing? We just do it. And if we don't think about it, we don't realize where we actually are. So I'm just bringing that up to put into your head, a way for you to keep yourself accountable. So, all right, so um, here we go. So the first thing I kind of talked about already a little bit is to slow down. Where in your life can you slow down? Where can you practice this? And you're gonna hear me use the word habit a lot too, because that action step that we talked about is synonymous with making it a habit. If you just do it once or twice, you're not gonna get anywhere. You have to make something a habit, like your mindset is a habit, but your mindset can change. You can make something a new habit, all right? So each of these things I'm gonna go through is about getting habitual. Take Where can you take an action step for it? And how are you gonna make it habitual? 
Okay, so the slowing down. Where in your life can you slow down? Is there a place in your life that you can slow down? Um, I do that after I get off these calls. I take a break for myself. I think about what I just did, what we just talked about. And uh, I look at it as a win and pat myself on the back. And I think about myself for a little bit and what I've done and how good it feels. And that slows me down from the next task I'm gonna start to go do, right? So what can you do to slow down? What kind of tasks can you do that you can slow down to do? Where, uh, cleaning the kitchen, um, you know, what you're doing at night before you go to bed, what you do in the morning, if you feel like you're running all day long, what can you do on the whole that you can keep saying to yourself to get more present, right? If you're slowing down, you're getting more present. So what can you do to be more present? So slowing down is the first one. The next one is to put yourself first. And this is something that so many of us are guilty of. I'm definitely with, with you on this one, if, if this is you. Um, putting ourselves first is so important. Now, you, you know, just to say it sounds obvious, but we're there for so many other reasons in our lives in this complex world that we forget to put ourselves first. And then we get exhausted and then we're not in a good mood anymore. So if we do the opposite and if we put ourselves first, we're filling ourselves up. We're giving ourselves what we need. We could do so much more for others. We could do more for ourselves. We could do more for our jobs. We could do more for other people. We can just do more. We're gonna be more empathetic. We're gonna have more clarity. We're just going to have more abundance, just more if we put ourselves first. So if that calls to you, you can try that. What can you do to put yourself first? What area of your life? When? How often? Will it be daily? You know, a certain part of your day or a few times a week? Go within and think about how you can put yourself first. It will make you calmer so you can slow down if you put yourself first. You're showing yourself compassion. You're showing yourself self-love. That is not selfish. That's what we all should be doing is self-love. The third one is communication. I find this to be a really big one. Lack of communication in the complexity of this world just makes things even more complex. So if you're communicating what you want for yourself, you're telling yourself what you're gonna do, whether that be you setting your intention or just getting your thoughts together, and have clarity for what you are doing. If there's somebody else involved or other people involved, don't just assume they're going to know what you're thinking in your head, because they're not. 
And with all these complexities going on in our heads, we're not thinking about that we're half the time, that they don't know what we're thinking. So imagine if you tell somebody what you're going to do before you do it, right? If it's, if it's in your job, you talk about it. You say, this is how this is going to work. If you're talking with your kids, don't wait till the last minute to say, get your shoes on. We're going out now. You know, don't wait till something is too late. Communicate it, whether it be earlier in the week or earlier in the day, but communicate it. Make sure the communication is there. And that is a huge way to add simplicity to your life. It keeps from the confusion and all that added complexity to our lives. So communication is a big one, if that one calls to you. Another one is trust. So think of how you feel when you trust. How, think of something that you trust, right? How long have you been driving? Do you trust yourself driving? Are you comfortable? Do you trust yourself in your job? Do you trust yourself around certain people? How does it feel when you trust yourself? Trust is the absence of fear, right? No fear when we trust, we're comfortable. So wouldn't it be nice to just be comfortable with everything in our lives or everything that you know we can be? New things are coming into our lives all the time and it takes time to trust, right? Things change in our lives, things come in and out, but the more we trust, the more comfortable we are. And the more comfortable we are, the more simplicity we have in our lives. So what is a part of your life that you might have some nervousness about? You get some agita in your tummy. Uh, you know, it gives you some kind of emotion. What's something you can practice trusting and make it that habit like we were talking about? So trust is another great one you can try. Uh, let's see, um, we talked about it for intention, knowing what you're going to do. Don't just run out the door and do something or don't just pick up that phone really fast and not even think about what you're gonna say. You know, you have an idea of what you're doing and that's why you pick up the phone really fast. How about trying to set an intention first? This is what time this call needs to be made. This is what I'm gonna talk about with this person. And maybe you think of, what they might be saying on their end and how you can communicate with them in that phone call. Uh, if it's a business thing, or even if it's a friend, if it's a family member, right? If it's a family member that you don't particularly love talking to, but it's something that needs to be done or anyone you don't love talking to, but it needs to be done. Set an intention. Think about it in your head before you do it. That's going to make it more simple for you. So intention is a big one. You can set it and you can forget it. Uh, let's see. Clarity. Uh, clarity kind of goes along with a few things on this list we've talked about. You know, if you set the intention, you have clarity. If you are, you know, doing some sort of communication, you have clarity. If you're thinking of the problem we were talking about before that you want to solve and what that smallest action step you can take is you have clarity 
don't do anything in your life until you have the clarity about what it is that you're planning, what it is you're going to do. If you have any questions about it, get on the phone and ask somebody. Look it up on the computer. However, you can answer those questions so you're not confused. And if it's something you forget to do, because we all do it, we go on our merry way to go do an errand or the next thing we have to do for our day and we come across something we didn't think about, it's okay. It's all okay. You can think to yourself, this is something that really works for me. You can think to yourself, you know what? In the end, everything's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. This is not a catastrophe. Change that mindset if you're in the middle of it. It takes a while in the beginning. It takes a while in the beginning for you to trust yourself that you're going to do it. It takes a while in the beginning to remember to do it. But you make it that habit. It becomes putting on a seatbelt in your car. Or if you don't drive, you know, whatever it is that you do daily or almost daily that you just do without even thinking about it. So really, really important is clarity. Uh, here's another one that I love. When you have a thought in your head and it's, it's a negative thought, it's a negative emotion. You know what, for that matter, even if it's a happy one, but you're, you know, you're, you're ecstatic and you're jumping around like a Mexican jumping bean, you know what I mean? You're just all over the place and you can't contain yourself. Um, think about coming from love. And with saying that, let me ask you, when you think of things in your head, do you come from a place of love? Or are you just so used to it that you come from a place of negativity? Where do you come from? And if it is negativity, it's going to be okay. It's not the end of the world. This is not a catastrophe. It's really not. Because you know what? Now you realize it. Now you have clarity. Now you can know, okay, I've been thinking negative thoughts for so long. This has become my habit. So what do you want to do now? What's that smallest action step that you can take to turn the tables and come from love more? Again, practice, 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 practice. It's all it is, practice. But you got to start somewhere. You have to start and you have to want it. That's another thing. I hear so many people say they want this and they want that. But with the, when you go within to try to make your life more simple, ask yourself, do you really want something? Especially if you're not showing yourself the action, especially if you're not taking the action. Do you really want that? Is it something you think you should do, but maybe you actually don't want it? Or is it just really hard for you? Maybe you can use some help. Friends, family, coworkers, life coaches. Um, you know, really, when you see yourself think that you want something, but you're seeing whether you take the action or not, really, really look into that and put yourself in a feeling of love. Whatever you do, 
however you you can get it put yourself in a place of love because when you are feeling love you are going to be truthful with yourself you're not going to lie to yourself you're not going to sabotage yourself you're not going to get in your own way you just don't do that when you're coming from a place of love when you're coming from love you're going to make your true decision. You're going to give yourself a goal, that smallest action step towards something you really want. So try to come from that place of love as much as you possibly can. And just practice. I'll just say that over and over. Um, mistakes and failures. I personally do not like the word failures. Um, I, I learned when I was in coaching school, there are no failures, there's only feedback, right? Because failures, I, I like the word mistakes better. Okay, so I'll use the word mistakes. So we need mistakes. If we don't make mistakes, how else are we going to learn? You only learn so much by people telling you things. You learn a lot more by making mistakes. But here's the difference in the mindset. You make a mistake and you can say, okay, I made this mistake. Let me think about everything I did. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? What can I learn to do next time? What can I take with me, what serves me, and leave the rest behind? So you're learning from your mistake. So mistakes are very, very needed. And, but they're, they're not fun, but they're not fun because we were brought up that way here in the United States, in my family anyway. If you weren't, that's amazing. Um, but where I come from, everyone goes, oh man, I made a mistake and this feels terrible and I want to do it right. And instead of thinking of wanting to do it right, think about the journey that you're on. It's a journey to get to a goal and you're going to make mistakes on that journey because that's how you're learning now, right? So instead of thinking, I hate this, this is a terrible feeling, know that you made that mistake and go, okay, what am I gonna do now? What am I taking from this, right? So look at, mis I hope from hearing this one, you can take away the thought that mistakes aren't such a horrible thing, that they are needed. Now, some mistakes are bigger than others. And our biggest saboteurs that we have are our judge, We're constantly, constantly judging ourselves. And those saboteurs don't go away. But when you learn to live your life more simply, those saboteurs take a back seat including the judge, which means you're more confident in what you're doing or you're just okay with what you're doing. A mistake breeds two things. A mistake, um, uh, now I have to remember, I lost one of them. A mistake breeds a gift. What gift is coming from this mistake? And what opportunity is coming from this mistake? What am I learning? What's the opportunity that I see in this? And what's the gift in this? Because there's a gift in everything. Um, the worst things that happen to us, there's always a gift. But you're never going to find it if you always come from that place of negativity. That needs to come from that place of love to find that. So 
those are all the things we have um, slowing down, putting yourself first, communication, trust, intention, Let's see what else, clarity, coming from love, so, so important. Give yourself permission to do all of these things. Um, give yourself permission to make mistakes. Give yourself permission to come from love. Give yourself permission to have clarity, right? Let yourself do these things. Give yourself permission to slow down. Give yourself permission to do that. It's okay. The world is not going to crumble. It took me a long, long time to be able to say that to myself. But now I feel it's such a gift. I want to give this to you and the rest of the world. It could take a long time for you too. But boy, does it feel good. It really, really feels good. Give your permission to put yourself first, especially if you have families, especially if you have children, especially if you're in a place of higher power with lots of people underneath you. Put yourself first. They will be so much more appreciative if you do that, because if you put yourself first, they're going to see you as a different person. You're going to give off a different energy if you put yourself first. So it's twofold. You're there to be better for others and you're better for yourself. So it's such an important to give yourself permission to give yourself self-love and put yourself first. The communication, the trust, the intention, it's all there. So okay, I'm gonna go to the Q and A. I say that my schedule never lies. When I look at my schedule, it was completely blocked in. To slow down, I actually had to schedule in time to do nothing. Yep, do nothing was so hard. It is, right? It is so hard, especially in the beginning, especially when you've never done it before. So, oh my gosh, give yourself, please give yourself a pat on the back. Please celebrate yourself somehow, if you haven't already, hopefully you have, for doing something like that. Trying something like that, oh my gosh, so, so important. How did it go? If you're still here, let me know how that went. Um, I know you said it was really hard, but how did you feel afterwards? And how long did you give yourself to do it? So let's see. Uh, when I used to make mistakes, I was really hard on myself. This was me before. First criticize, then change. Now I try to do this first love, then change. Mm -hmm. Another congratulations. These are so, so important. How did you feel with that? First love, that's exactly what I was talking about, right? Come from that place of love. You see now that feeling you get, you're going to make the decision that you really want to make for you and not a decision that someone else wants you to make or one that you think you should just make, right? You're making the decision of what's right for you. And there was a third one here. An old boss of mine used to say, mistakes are pivot points. Yep, a change in the path, a change in the road. I wrote a funding application and I forgot to include the staff salary. We got the funding for the project, but no money to pay someone to do the job. Oops. 
I was ashamed of my mistake. And my boss said, well, let's pivot now. Wow, that's a great boss. That's amazing. I wish all bosses could be like that. We tweaked the project, scaled down, and then moved money over to pay for a staff member. I thought I was going to get fired from this mistake, but it actually worked out to be a great learning opportunity. Oh, yes. Love it, love it, love it. What a huge learning opportunity. And you know what? We'll forget things again. You'll write another one. And you know, we're humans. We're not perfect. We're not, well, I say we're not machines, but even machines aren't perfect half the time too, right? But we're definitely not perfect. So we're going to do it again. But that feeling that you got from your boss when you realized you weren't going to be fired and he was there to help you instead. Wow. I can't imagine how that has propelled you next time you made a mistake or next time you will make a mistake. That is such a good experience. I'm so glad it was a positive experience and not a negative one because those negative ones are the ones that keep us from moving forward. Uh, machines are created by humans. Yes, they are. You're absolutely right. They are. Yeah. So they're not perfect. They are amazing. They're, what's that? What is that? They're amazing when they work, but boy, are they headaches when they don't? Something like that. So, okay. Well, does anybody else have any more questions or comments they want to make? Thank you so much for coming here. I really appreciate you being here today. And hopefully you've gotten something to take away from this. Because if you can even make just one area of your life a little bit simpler, you can only build from there. You can hopefully see what it feels like to just make one area of your life a little bit more simple and just love that feeling, right? It could be anything. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you got something out of it. Let me see, there's a little bit more. That boss inspired me to learn about leadership. Excellent. I've been very lucky to have amazing guides in my life. life. Yes, you know what? I've learned to use the word blessed because I really feel we are blessed. There are those watching over us, the universe, entities. We are blessed. They do bless us. I believe we bring it on, our, on ourselves. So that's amazing. You're very, very blessed. And then how do you simplify your life when it seems like it might cause more work for other people? Interesting um, question. How do you simplify your life? Well, what's the kind of work, first of all, that you're talking about that would be more work for others? You can simplify your life getting help. Um, but of course, you don't want to, you know, put other people in such a position that their life isn't simple anymore, or their life is getting too complex. So I guess it really depends on what it is. Can you give me a little bit more information on that? Um, if it's not for help, depending on what it is that you want to simplify, that's why I say pick an area. If you just want to simplify your life on the whole, that's too much to think about. You need to pick one thing to think about for starters. And I'm guessing you have because you're talking about other people helping you. So uh, I try to simplify the life by reducing the household chores. Gotcha. Then my partner started to complain about the state of the house. 
Okay, really good question. So the first thing that, that brought up for me hearing the story from you is boundaries. Where do you have boundaries set uh, when it comes to cleaning the house? Who does what? Like when you say you are, you are giving your partner some chores. So you're doing some and they're doing some and now it sounds like they're starting to complain. Uh, I'd be curious why they're complaining about the state of the house. Um, how, uh, I see here you, you're not really stating how the reduce of the, the chores are. Um, so that would be what you would wanna look at. What is changing now that you've reduced, reduced your part of the chores? What was the change that was made uh, for that to happen? And what's happening now to make him say something like that? So um, I think I, I got the question a little wrong in the beginning, I apologize. I thought you meant he was doing chores with you. Um, but you should, most definitely share the chores if you want to. Every household is different. Some people share them, some people don't. If that's what you want to do, that is what you should do. And when there are other people involved with anything, there also has to be boundaries involved too. And that's why I said that. Uh, okay. So does any of this make sense? Um, let me know if I'm not answering what you're trying to find out from me. Um, you know, because if the state of the house is still messier, that's what you want to figure out to continue to keep your life a little bit more simple. What needs to be done so that your life stays simple but your partner doesn't think the house is in disarray, right? So think about, you know, ask those questions, think of what those answers are and act accordingly. So I hope that can help you. And you can let me know if it did. And you can also always get in touch with me too. So, which is what I'm about to bring up, how you can get in touch with me. Welcome to get in touch with me in a plethora of ways to ask questions, to have a conversation, um, to, to talk about anything really. So uh, I am on um, Instagram at Restore You Coaching and Reiki. And my website is the same name, Restore You Coaching and Reiki. Uh, dot com. I'm, I did the uh, cause I can't, I'm an LLC and I can't remember if I put the LLC in there or not, but I think it's just restore you coaching and Reiki.com. You can go there. You can get in touch with me there, ask a question, uh, look at more about what I do, my philosophies, how I work as a life coach. And, um, where else? My Facebook page. I have a middle name. It's Jody Kaufman Jackson, J O D I. K-A-U-F, like Frank, M-A-N, Jackson. You can find me there. And I have the Facebook business page, which is the same thing. Restore You Coaching and Reiki LLC is the business page. So you have all kinds of ways to get in touch with me. If you want to email me, you could do that too. It's my name, Jody K. Jackson at gmail.com. Um, I like to give people all kinds of ways. So whatever is easiest for you, because I like to keep things simple. So feel free to reach out to me if you want to. And thank you so, so much for coming today. I really appreciate it. And if you do feel called, please pay it forward any way you want. Give someone a smile, open a door for somebody. You want to go a little bit more, get them a cup of coffee write someone a poem, pick up the phone for a phone call, anything you can think of. 
just whatever it is. It's so much of a bigger deal than we ever realize when we pay it forward because nobody's expecting it. It's not how this complex world is used to working right now. So let's get that going more and more and more as much as we possibly can. So thanks again for coming. I really hope you got something out of this, living life simply. And I will see you soon. I'll see you next month. Take care. Bye-bye.